Do you want to learn how to make thumbnails like FaZe, FaZe Rain, Vanos, Allie, PewDiePie, Sky Does Minecraft, and a bunch of other successful YouTubers? Well, you're in luck because today I'm going to be bringing you my Photoshop tutorial on how to create amazing YouTube thumbnails and likewise attract more viewers to your videos which will in turn help your channel grow. So if we go over to YouTube, we can see that in my sub box right now we have a multitude of different style thumbnails thumbnails but don't worry because we're gonna be making something even better than every single thumbnail in this page right now I can guarantee you just watch the video and you're gonna be learning how to make ridiculous thumbnails that will attract viewers without a doubt so first I wanted to show you guys a few examples of what I'm talking about before we begin I wanted to let you guys know or show you I should say some of the thumbnails that I've made in the past and as you can see, they're very eye-catching and they will definitely, like I said before, attract more viewers to your videos. I've created thumbnails for Elevate, uh, Nick at Night, which is a Clash Royale YouTuber. I've created thumbnails for the Red Reserve in the past and a bunch of other channels. And if you want proof, I can leave a link to those channels in the description below if you want. Um, I just leave it in the comment section I'm sure I can get some of those channels in the description for you for proof but either way as you can see I'm gonna be showing you how to make thumbnails like these and it's really not that hard so let's go into Photoshop and I'm gonna be giving you the dimensions right now so all we have to do is go to file new and I have a template set up called thumbnail but you can just copy the settings right here width is 1280 height is 720 and I like to keep the resolution at 72 and you can just copy the rest of the settings if they aren't already default for you so just press ok and we will be granted a white blank page and we're gonna be making this the awesome looking thumbnail like I showed you before so what we need to do is create a new layer and before anything else we are going to be going to get a background so here we are in Chrome and we are going to be getting a background for our thumbnails. Now it doesn't have to be anything special, I'm just currently going to use an Overwatch background um, just because I feel like it. So Overwatch Map Background HD and you can do the exact same thing if you really want to copy. Uh, but obviously you want to have the background pertaining to the game you're playing. So I'm just going to copy this right now, making sure it's HD. And if you don't know what that is, it's high definition. So when we paste it, pressing Control V into Photoshop, it's HD. And it's not going to show up as a super small image like this. Because when we stretch it out, it's going to be really ugly. Again, make sure it's HD. And here we go. Now we're just going to resize it to make sure it fits the entire page and we can just drag these little bars and there we go we have our background so now that we have our background into Photoshop what we can do now is press Control and M on our keyboard opening up the curves panel and what you can do from this screen is change the curves to add a bit of contrast so what we can do is drag the bottom bit following my mouse cursor right now drag the bottom bit down a little bit and drag this top bit up and as you can see, it creates a nice little contrast in the background. It overall makes the thumbnail look much better in my opinion. Now this next part is extremely essential in my opinion in creating more of a popping text even though we're not even adding the text yet but what we can do is create a new layer by going to this new layer tab at the very bottom going to our brush tool and then selecting white as the color if it's not already default and it should bring you a brush like this. Also, one thing I forgot to mention is we can go up to this little tab right here and make sure if the brushes would load because I have so many brushes in Photoshop, it might take a little while, but make sure the hardness is at 0%. This is very important. Anyways, we can back out of that now, go to the very top of the page and press down on your mouse and it should create this light but I don't even know how to call it. It's a light. It's basically a light, guys. That's all it is. It's really simple. And as you can see, it brightens up the very top and it will create a bit of depth in the thumbnail later on when we start adding more effects. So now that we have that, I'm going to rename this to light because it's a bit hard to see. And then I'm creating another layer and going to drag it down underneath the light layer. And I'm going to go to my colors and I'm going to change it to black instead of white. And we're going to be doing the exact same thing go to your brush tool but instead of going to the very top this time what we're going to be doing is we're going to be dragging down on the sides to create this nice little shadow and we're gonna be doing it on the left side as well and on the bottom just a little bit 
beautiful just like that and as you can see it creates a nice little shadow and it might be a little bit too much and that's completely okay all we have to do is change the layer styles by double clicking on the layer and changing the opacity to maybe about 50 anywhere between 20 and 50 percent should be completely fine and it will look exactly like this and like i said if we toggle the layer off it doesn't look as good so we just improved the background tenfold in my opinion but now it's time to add some text so the very first thing that we need to do is again create a new layer and i'm actually going to drag this underneath the light so that the light is above the text we always want to have that make sure the light is above the text and we can go to our text tool and you can change the font to whatever you want but for this purpose i'm going to be using big noodle titling if you don't have the font i'm going to be leaving a link to DaFont in the description and all you have to do is download and install the font you can just search it up and it should be there and i'm going to go to my color and i'm going to change to white just to start off we're going to be changing it in a bit um, but yeah so we're going to click and we can type whatever we want so for the purpose of this video i'm just going to be writing tutorial and click the check mark for ok control t drag with your alt and shift with the diagonal to make it bigger and centered i know it's a lot of information once you learn this stuff it's going to be extremely simple and it's going to be like the back of your hand for making thumbnails and it's just gonna make your life a bit easier so now that we have that and you might be wondering why we have an italicized effect on it and if you don't know what an italicized effect is it's making it slanted like this so in order to get that effect all we have to do is go to our character options on this little side panel and check this little slanted T and it will be all good alright so now that we have that done I'm going to be creating another layer by pressing control J which will create a copy of the tutorial text with my move tool I'm gonna to switch to that and I'm gonna be dragging down holding shift selecting both of these layers continuously holding shift and clicking on the thumbnails drag them into the center to center them and on the bottom layer not holding shift this time because we only want to select that layer I'm going to be changing this to YouTube if I can spell YouTube oh my gosh okay so click the check mark again and then press control T again to transform holding alt and shift at the very top corner drag and make it a bit smaller so this little text effect that I'm gonna be adding isn't a necessity for everyone but I think it's going to make a big difference in this thumbnail and you can use it exactly how I use it if you want just watch so I've already created another layer here and we're gonna be going to our shape tool at the very bottom and if you don't have this rectangle one selected all you have to do is right click and select rectangle now all you have to do now is drag out a rectangle holding the mouse button to basically surround the smaller text like that and even though it's white what we're gonna be doing is changing the color right now uh, to a red just so we can see it there we go and we can see that YouTube is on top of it now now what we need to do now is center the YouTube on the rectangle and to do this all we need to do is press control and click on the thumbnail of YouTube go to the rectangle make sure it's selected go to the move tool and at this very top you should see these little controls right here click the two middle ones and it will center this box with the YouTube now what we need to do is press control and click on the YouTube thumbnail so it will select the entire layer go back to a rectangle select that make sure that, that layer is selected and press delete and what that does is it creates this little cool effect it deletes the text on the rectangle and it makes this nice little effect now I don't want this to be red so all we have to do is go back to our layer styles and exit this color overlay go to gradient overlay and this is the gradient that a lot of people use in their thumbnails it's like this yellowish orange and it really drags uh, the attention of viewers for whatever reason it just jumps out at you so we're gonna select that and if you don't have this gradient it's really easy to make and after that I'm going to be adding one extra effect called inner glow and what this does is we can change actually one second before I show you the effect change the blend mode from linear dodge add to overlay and as you can see all it really does is create a nice little 
outline on the uh, box or whatever you want to call it and it just adds to the depth of the text so now that we have that done what we can do is right click on this rectangle and we can go to rasterize layer and it will create all of the effects and merge it onto the layer that we just made so now we have that now it's going to be time to edit the tutorial text and i'm not going to be doing a whole lot for this just adding a gradient overlay like before and of course a custom one and uh that's pretty much it just changing the opacity to this and if you want to create it here is a quick glimpse there we go and change the opacity to about 24 click ok and now we have that cool so now we have the text done and that's the that's the main thing like that's honestly the real reason why people want to click on your video because of the text now it doesn't really stand out now that's the only issue so all we have to do is merge these two layers again by clicking shift and clicking both of them at the same time go to rasterize type merge layers just like this and actually one thing I'm gonna be doing is making sure that the tutorial text is centered so you shouldn't have to do this for the most part one second let me just fix this whenever you're designing there's going to be things that come up that aren't exactly perfect and you just have to fix them and roll with it it's super easy to fix when you know what you're doing but when you don't know what you're doing it can be a little bit challenging either way I'm just fixing this right now just so it will look a bit better sorry if I'm wasting your time guys I apologize but now we're gonna be merging the layers for real this time and adding a drop shadow now copy the settings I'm about to put on right now because these are the ones that are going to get you the best effect in my opinion. So turn up the distance, add size just like that, click OK, rasterize layer, go back, do the exact same thing just like so. It doesn't have to be exact every time just so you get the same relative effect. Go back and do the exact same thing again. Beautiful. And now we have a real good drop shadow effect on the text and it stands out as you can see. Now I'm going to be adding one more thing to the background so we can create a new layer above the background. Go back to our brush tool again make sure the hardness is at 0%. Go to our color but this time we're going to be adding a bit of a blue. And if you don't know what this is, it just really creates a, uh, a better effect on the background if I can explain it any other way I would, but that's basically all it is. So now we have our brush and we're going to cover the entire background. Now once we finish that, we're going to click and change the blend mode to overlay, change the opacity to about 30, go back to our background, press Ctrl and U, change the saturation to maybe negative 10, there we go. And there we have it. It just creates a nice little effect. I don't know what it is. I like to use it on my thumbnails. You don't have to use it on yours if you don't want to, but that's just how I roll. One more thing we're going to be adding is a border. And if you don't know what that is, it's just basically some lines. So create a new layer, go into your gradient, select the entire page and just drag, double click on the layer, change the fill opacity to zero, go to outer glow, change the size all the way to like midway go to drop shadow and do the same effect that we did for the other one beautiful press ctrl t go to these sides and drag out like so here we go this takes a little while it can be a little tedious each time um, it doesn't really have to be perfect either because most people are just really not going to care um, so as long as it's a few pixels uh, together, it should be completely fine, no worries. And there we go, it has a nice little border to it now. One extra effect is going to be another inner glow like we did to the text. Go to overlay, and there we have it. So that's pretty much it guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, it's not really that advanced. If you want to see an advanced thumbnail tutorial, let me know definitely in the comments below and uh, smash that like button because that will let me know that you want to see more Photoshop tutorials. Good luck with your channels, good luck making thumbnails, I hope this video helps you. Peace out.